deacons who have devoted us this melodious singing choir amen come on bless the Lord for them and to those of you that are here and those that are watching virtually it's good for us to be alive I think I'm talking to the wrong group let me say that again it's good for us to be alive alert and active for it is in him we live move and have our being God is good I tell you and he's worthy to be praised John chapter 16 John 16 Beginning with verse 16, and we will end our reading with verse 24. God is keeping me. Yeah. Work that in your spirit. As you think all about all that's going on around you, it could be happening to you. But God is keeping me. his holy name. Hallelujah. Verse 16, a little while and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while and ye shall see me because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, what is this that he said unto us? A little while and ye shall not see me. And again a little while, and ye shall see me. And because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, what is this that he saith a little while? We cannot tell what he said. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said a little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask in the Father, in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto, have you not asked nothing in my name? Ask, 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 and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. God's word for God's people. God's word is blessed. May we be blessed by being hearers and doers of his holy word. Look at somebody, if you will, and say the joy we have in Jesus. In Jesus. Amen. The joy we have in Jesus.
the purpose of Jesus' coming is to take away our sins and to remove the curse which was upon us in order to bring us to the joy of salvation. Brothers and sisters, it is joyous to be saved. Let me say that again. It is joyous to be saved. In John chapter 16, Jesus discussed with his disciples things they could expect. Verses 5 through 11, after his departure, they could expect the Holy Spirit to come and convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. In verses 12 through 15, they could expect the Holy Spirit guiding them into all truth. In verses 16 through 24, Jesus told them to expect their sorrows to be transformed into joy. They could expect joy. Not the joy of the world, but the joy of Jesus. Uh, the two are not the same. There's a difference in the superficial artificial joy of the world and the spiritual joy of Jesus. The superficial, artificial joy of the world is based on things going our way in the world. We experience superficial, artificial joy when we get what we want in the world. Superficial, artificial joy is predicated on good circumstances. Oh, whereas the joy of the Lord is the deep joy, spiritual joy we have because of being rooted and grounded in the Lord. The, the, the joy of Jesus is the joy of forgiveness, the joy of God's grace, the joy of God's righteousness, the joy of understanding that even our trials and, and our troubles are working for our good. The joy of Jesus is joy of knowing that even death can't separate us from the Lord. That's why the church of old would say, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. Because this joy that we have is not predicated upon circumstances, not predicated upon things going in our favor, but this joy that we have is a result of the relationship that we have with Jesus the Christ. Oh, the joy of Jesus supersedes the conditions of life is not hindered or hampered by the happenings of life. The joy of Jesus is not hinged upon circumstances are going well, but it's hinged upon our relationship with the Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost. All oh, brothers and sisters, as I read through the Bible, I discovered that God has not promised us a life that's void or absent of tears. Matter of fact, God is very forthcoming in the word. Uh, Job said, a man born of a woman is of a few days. And the few days are full of trouble. 
Jesus said, in this world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. Which means that right in the midst of our tribulations, we can experience joy. Matter of fact, the brother of Jesus, James, put pen to papyrus to write, count it all joy. When you fall into divers temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith worketh patience, and patience shall have her perfect work. It's all working for our good. So right in the midst of life's bad experiences, we can experience joy. I got joy. I got joy. Down on the inside. I, I got joy. Joy, joy, joy. On the inside. And the world didn't give it. And the world can't take it away. Well, Jesus, in the text, revealed to his disciples this joy that they would experience at his resurrection. He says to them that there's joy in knowing the risen Savior. Notice verses 16 through 20. He, he, he addresses their confusion. They're baffled and confused about what he's saying. They were perplexed. Jesus said, a little while. Not long now. It's not an extended period, just a little while. And ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Now, this is not the first time Jesus has had this conversation with his disciples. Matter of fact, in John chapter 7, verse 33, Jesus said to them, Yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. In John 13 verse 33, Jesus said, little children, yet a little while I am with you, ye shall seek me. And as I said unto you, the Jews, whither I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, Jesus said to them in John 14, 19, yet a little while. And the world seeth me no more. But you shall see me. Because I live. Ye shall live also. He, he told his disciples that though the world would see him no more. They would see him in the power of the Spirit. And that they would moreover have uh, adequate preparation for such spiritual beholding in the resurrection. Yet now he says, ye behold me no more. He, he had associated the phrase, ye shall see me no more with the conviction of the world knowing true righteousness and his going to the Father. So that from the time, that time forth, he would be hidden in God. The world would not see him, but his disciples would see him again. That's good news. In the midst of their perplexity, 
in the midst of their confusion, he said, because of their spiritual connection, they would see him. Let me pause parenthetically to say to us, if you are not spiritually connected, you, you don't see him. You don't know him. You can't comprehend him. But those of us who are born again, blood bought, washed in the blood of the Lamb, have deposited our faith and hope in Jesus Christ. Even in the midst of this darkness, we can see him, we can hear him, we can understand him. Hallelujah. He says, you're going to see me again. A little while. Oh, verse 17 and 18, the disciples said one to another, they were confused. And as always, they would talk amongst each other, trying to work it out. And they would say, what is this? He said, a little while, and ye behold me not, and again, a little while, and ye shall see me. What is this business he's talking about? I go to the Father. And they were, they were speaking of the little while. We, we don't know what he said. See, the reason they didn't know what he said was because they had not been endowed yet. See, while he was with them, the Holy Spirit was not in them. Oh, help me preach. And they were confused because they were trying to understand in the flesh. You know, the flesh can't understand the things of God. It's enmity. And they were trying to understand and they were talking among themselves. And they had no revelation from God because they were not endowed yet. That's why he says, just give it a little while. And sometimes, you know, that's what the Lord would say to us. As we deal with life and, and we are confused and perplexed and baffled about what we are dealing with in life, Jesus sometimes has to tell us, just give it a little while. Settle down. You know, it's not time for us to know all things yet. Just give it a little while. That's why the saints of old would say you understand it better by and by. Just give it a little while. Why this happened to you and why that happened to you, just give it a little while. Why the relationship dissolved and the marriage dissolved. Why your child got in trouble and children are miserable. Give it a little while. Why mama pass and why daddy pass? Why sister, brother pass? Why me? Why am I going through what I'm going through? You just have to give it a little while. You know, God has fixed time to have a big mouth. Time can't hold nothing. If you just give time a little time, time will speak. Just a little while. I'm preaching Ben y'all saying amen. What is this? Sometimes we too ask the question, what is this? 
that we read. What, what is this that the Lord is saying to us? For a little while. They were perplexed. And, and I like how Jesus went on to explain what he meant by a little while. He was talking about his arrest, crucifixion, burial, and resurrection. And, 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 and as he engaged in his conversation with them, he started talking about the two responses to his death. He says his disciples would weep and lament that when, 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 when he was arrested in the garden, they wept and lamented. While he was marked from judgment hall to judgment hall, they wept and lamented. As he was made to carry that cross up Golgotha Hill, they wept and lamented. As they witnessed him giving his hands to the Roman soldiers, to nail his hands to that old rugged cross and put a crown of thorns on his head and hang as an insult king of the Jews they wept and lamented and as they raised him between two thieves to bring disrespect and to disdain him they wept and lamented when he dropped his head the locks of his shoulders they wept and lamented took his lifeless body and put his lifeless body in that tomb not properly being embalmed, they wept and lamented. And while they were weeping and lamenting, the world was rejoicing. Because as Jesus was being marched from judgment hall, the judgment hall, the world thought it had worn over. had the victory as he was being whipped Thursday night. The world thought it had the victory. As he was made the next morning to march that cross up that hill, the world thought that they had the victory. As he was made to lay on that cross and his hands were nailed and and he was raised between two thieves. The world rejoiced. As he uttered seven words, the world mocked and rejoiced. They even cast lots for his garments. At the foot of the cross, looking up at Jesus, laughing. If you be, the son of God. Why don't you save yourself? Even one of the thieves. Said if you be the son of God. If you be the savior. Why don't you save yourself and save us? Mocking. But one thing about it. When you're a child of God. When you belong to God because you have your faith in Jesus Christ, 
Sadness and sorrow don't last always. Do I have a witness? Because what they forgot about was Sunday morning. And that's why, you know, we go through and that's why we can shout in the midst of what we're going through because we have a Sunday morning experience. Yeah, they were laughing and rejoicing and, 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 and they were joking and jesting until Sunday morning came. And his disciples were sorrowful and weeping and wailing until Sunday morning came. And when Sunday morning came, he got up out of that grave and sorrow was over and sorrow was replaced with joy. And brothers and sisters, if he got up Sunday morning, and he did, if he conquered death and the grave, he can conquer anything in our lives. He says, you'll have joy again. You'll have joy again. You'll have joy again. Don't you worry about it. It's coming back. You'll have joy again in the midst of this pandemic. Don't you let this get the best of you. God is getting the best of it. You will have joy again. Just keep on hanging on in there. Keep on praying. Keep on seeking his faith. Keep on singing his praises. Keep on coming. Keep on giving yourself to him every day. Keep your devotions going. Keep yourself built up spiritually because a breakthrough is coming. Sunday morning is coming. Oh, you ought to look at somebody and tell them that it's going to be all right. Trouble don't last always. We coming out, 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 we getting through this. We coming out, it's going to be all right. We coming out, this thing can't get the best of me because I know somebody who got all power, heaven and earth in his hand. We coming out of this. I wish y'all would help me tell somebody, we coming out. We coming out. I may be down now, but I'm not going to stay down. I may be sad now, but I'm not going to stay sad. I'm coming out. I got something inside of me. I got something inside of me that the world can't take from me. It's joy. And the reason I have it is because I know Jesus. Watch the text. He says it's going to be all right. You got joy not only because you know Jesus, but it's going to be all right. And you got joy because your prayers are answered. He says when I go to the Father, don't ask nothing of me. Ask of my Father. He says, but when you get through asking, just say in Jesus' name. Oh God, help me. He says, just say in Jesus' name. He, he, he says, ask it in my name. And it shall be done. You, you, you ask the Father in my name and he will give it you in my name. In all your prayers to, to the Father... The name Jesus is mentioned as your right to be heard. Let me warn you of something. Often prayer without the name Jesus is an affront. Insult to God. Ignoring or trying to bypass the name because you're worried about what folk think. Is sinful. I can remember some years ago I was asked to pray or do an invocation at Mississippi State University commencement service. And they said, Well, we know you're a Baptist preacher. And we want you to pray. But now we don't want you to say in Jesus' name. I said, All right, you want me to pray. 
You know I'm a Baptist preacher. And you want me to pray. But you don't want me to pray in Jesus' name. I said, well, I don't believe in making petitions without hooking it up with power. I, I, I don't believe in making public appearances to please man. I was commanded by in the word that when I speak with the Father, that I need to close it out. In his name, in the Lord's name, in Jesus' name. I said, well, if I can't pray in Jesus' name, you need to get somebody else. They said, well, it's too late for us to fix the program because your name is already on the program. But we need you to be ecumenical. I said, well, I'm going to pray in Jesus' name. Listen, you can't be ashamed of the Lord because the Lord says when if you are ashamed of him, he will be ashamed of you. Oh, when we pray. You got to know when you pray that your prayers are heard. Do I have a witness? He said to his disciples, that you are in the world of trouble. Tribulations are all around. He said, but don't worry. Because I have given you on something on the inside. That the world didn't give you. And the world can't take away its joy. Come on, say that with me, if you will. It's joy. And this joy that I have is in Jesus. And I thank God for joy. Because the world don't want me to have it. But he gives it to me anyhow. I can walk around with my shoulders broad. I can walk around with my head hung high. I can walk around singing the Lord's praises. Because I got joy on the inside. Joy, joy, joy. You ought to look at somebody and tell them I got joy. And I'm going to keep my joy because the Lord gave it to me. Well, let me close this sermon by telling you again the crucifixion story. They took Jesus from the Garden of Gethsemane and they marched him from Judgment Hall to Judgment Hall. He didn't even try to defend himself because he had an appointment on a hill called Calvary. He told his disciples that I got to go away so that the Holy Spirit will come unto you when they marched him from judgment hall to judgment hall and when that was all done the next morning they marched him up the Via Della Rosa and they made him lay on the cross and they nailed his hand to that old rugged cross I thank God for Jesus because out of his hand came blood ain't God alright I thank God for Jesus because out of the thorns on the crown came blood ain't God alright I thank God for Jesus because they ribbed his feet and out of the spike that went through his feet came blood ain't God alright 
They hung him between two thieves. He died. That's that that Friday evening. Uh, he died on that rugged cross. But I thank God that's not the end of the story. They put him in a borrowed tomb. Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Before the roosters could crow. Sunday morning. Before the women ran to the tomb. Sunday morning. Before the S-U-N could get up. Sunday morning. Before anything could happen. Jesus got up from that grave with all power heaven and earth in his hands and I got to ask you one question this morning ain't the Lord alright if you know he's alright you ought to look at somebody and tell somebody that he's alright with me because he walks with me he talks with me he tells me that I'm his all yeah 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 joy 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 there's joy in knowing the risen savior there's joy in knowing that your prayers are answered. He tells his disciples that your sorrow will be turned into joy. He didn't say we wouldn't have sorrow, but he said they will be turned into joy. The doors of the Lord's house stands ajar. Everyone present, if you will, stand to your feet. Those of you who are watching virtually, we extend invitation to you. That if you're not saved, you don't have the joy of Jesus. But you can be saved today. By depositing your hope, your faith and confidence in Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God. He came from the Father, died in your place for your good. Believe he was buried and he was raised from the dead. If you can believe that, the Bible says, and confess that with your mouth, you shall be saved. Secondly, if you are here or you're watching virtually, and you need a church home, and the Lord has laid this church on your heart, information is on the screen. You can communicate with us. And we would love to be your family of faith, family of fellowship. That we can grow together. We can serve together until he calls us home. Thirdly, if you here or you are watching virtually and you need to be restored. The Lord is married to the backslider. If you would just pray and ask God for that intimacy, that closeness. And as David said, for the joy of your salvation, you can be saved. And not experience joy because... You've allowed too much of the world to creep in. Too much carnality. But the Lord says, I'll restore you. He'll bring you back close to him. Bless you and give you back the joy of your salvation. 
Please make your choice. Please choose Jesus. Please come. Please come. Please come. Please come. Ooh, he, he will save you just now. Only trust him. Only trust him. Only trust him. Just bless each of you. Remember next Sunday service, we will be in the parking lot. Service will begin at 8.30 uh, and we want you here to share in our family time um, as we eat together the Lord's Supper as a family of faith. Uh, we're having service earlier so we can uh, avoid the heat and uh, you won't have to burn so much of your gas, your ethanol, and uh, your air conditioner, but we want you here to praise the Lord. Let us praise the Lord together. Amen. And then we will hear from our committee um, next week, well, the following week, the second Sunday, we are getting ready to come back for worship, in-person worship. Uh, we have uh, the sanctuary taped off. Uh, for proper spacing. Uh, we have procedures in place with the committee. Uh, we, won't, uh, we have registration online. We want you to uh, go to nbbc.org. Uh, what is it? Dot org. NBBC. M-I-N. All right, dot org. And um, we want you to register. We have 8 o'clock service and 1030 service. Uh, we'll begin on the 23rd of August. The 23rd of August. Now we, uh, once that service max out at 200 and 255, all right, we somewhere around in there. Uh, you won't be able to register for that service anymore, so you have to get the later service at 1030. And um, listen, we're still having virtual worship and all of that. It's just what the Lord has laid on my heart, that we have to seek him even in the midst of this. Have to seek him, seek his face. We have to seek him. He's the answer. He's the answer. So pray much. Uh, we have, listen, approaching uh, the 23rd, starting on the 9th, we'll have 14 days of consecration. Uh, within those 14 days, we'll pray together as a family, church family, and we will read both 1st and 2nd Timothy. All right? And uh, I have it broken down in uh, pieces or particulars so we can read together. And uh, just a reading assignment, uh, First and Second Timothy, and 14 days of prayer. All right? Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. We want to also remind us of our giving. We have Giblify. Our church is open Monday through Thursday from 8 to 5. Uh, if you're not giving through the Giblify app, you can come by the church and drop it uh, in the box uh, closest to the office 
the secretary's office. Uh, thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your support. Uh, thank you for your giving. Uh, we are blessed as a church, uh, but we want to keep being blessed so we can make an impact uh, in the world for Jesus. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, as I pray, every head bowed, every eye closed. May the grace of God in this sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest rule and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. Lord, we thank you for the joy that you have given us. Lord, through the Holy Spirit, that we know that you are our Savior, you are our Lord, and when we pray, our prayers are answered because of Jesus. Bless us in our going out like you have blessed us in our coming in. In Jesus' name, amen.